Okay, everybody, this is Lonnie. We're back for part two. And we're going to go in and get into it right away. Get to the editing screen. And um, make the background light. Okay, so we did the step up here across the top. And the next line is this line right here. Um, as you see, some of them are lit up, some of them aren't lit up. Um, I'm just going to go in and grab a, just a generic image so we've got something on the screen. Okay, there's a butterfly on the screen. Not at least some of them are, are lit up. If you do anything to your object, doesn't matter what it is. Say we there's a the square around it, and you can resize it by using these outside corners, just like that. Um, and then the single square at the top allows you to drag it and spin it to wherever you want it. Say we do something like that, and we don't like it. We we it went back the way it was. You can hit undo, and it'll put it back the way it was before. Hit redo. So these are shortcut buttons to um, get your image back to where it was. So undo, redo. Basically the oh shit buttons. Um, array is um, something we'll have to go into later, but it does things like um, creating a test pattern for testing your materials and, and settings. Um, if you've got um, one image and you want to create a bunch of images off of it it'll let you do that okay so there, there we, have the, we got the image highlighted now the array one will work say we've got one butterfly and you need to cut out six butterflies um, you can actually click on it Right click, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. All those different butterflies to get the butterflies in there. Or you can click on the one butterfly after you've manipulated it and done all the stuff you want to do to it. Then come up to array and hit array creation. When you hit array creation, a menu is going to pop up. And it says how many columns, how many rows. So let's crank up the number of columns and crank up the number of rows. Now, you can space them farther apart, close together, um, and then once you get it done, you hit confirm. Okay, with that few mouse clicks, we've got all the butterflies we need to cut out. We don't have to sit there and cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste. If this ends up being more than you need, you can click it, delete, click it, delete. Or you can do a whole, you can highlight a group of them and hit delete. Make it whatever you want. Once you've got them all up there, you can move them around, do whatever. But basically what that does is it saves you from doing a whole lot of uh, clicking on that. Basically, uh, again, you highlight what you want, hit array, and then array creation, and they, they create. Uh, centric creation, um, if you click on that, you get angles and different stuff. If if you need it, you'll know what it is. If you don't, don't worry about it. I've never used it. And I don't know all the ins and outs about it. So, I don't even worry about it. The next one up um, is I got my butterfly here. Uh, and I need to test on the material that I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to put on a piece of walnut. I've never used walnut before. I don't know how, let's just say I've never used walnut before. And I don't know how hard it is and how much energy I'm going to use in the laser to make it happen. If I hit material test array, another um, menu pops up. Uh, and a whole bunch of settings on it. Maximum power you're going to use. Minimum power you're going to use. Maximum speed you're going to use. Minimum speed you're going to use. Um, typically what I'll do, I'll go ahead and hit confirm. Uh, let me just 
make this smaller. And I wouldn't suggest doing this with butterflies, usually just circles or squares, but let me get rid of this stuff here. I'm gonna get rid of this stuff so we can make it bigger. You can see it. This is a test array. On this side of it is the speed, uh, 600 millimeters per 453 millimeters, 305, whatever. And then the bottom is power, 10%, 33%, 65%, 78%, 100%. Um, and basically when you run it, it is going to run through a test and print each one of these. That's why you don't want butterflies. That's too much detail. It's square or circles usually what to do. Um, and if we have... Okay, so that, that's what it looks like. I want to take it to another screen. Don't worry about it right now while I get there. Just remember that it's a test array. This is a test array that's already done on a piece of basswood. Okay. I hear millimeters per second. 250, 200, 150, 150. Um, those are your speeds. And these are the amount of power. 20%, 40, 60, 80, 100%. As you see, if this particular square here, if we run the laser on this type of wood at 20% power, 250 millimeters per second, this is the shade you're gonna get. Conversely, if we run the laser on this piece of wood at 100% power at 50 millimeters per second, this is the shade of wood you're gonna get. Um, usually, after you've run it a while, you'll know right roughly where you're going to be otherwise you can run a test pattern and you do it the bigger the test pattern is the longer you're going to take to do it that's why i try to keep them uh, relatively small uh, when i do it um, when you run a test pattern this shouldn't have to be said but yeah it's come up if you get up here into the higher ranges and you start burning a hole through it at a hundred millimeters a second and 80 percent power hit cancel and quit the test because once you've burned a hole through here on this particular square every hole after the every every test piece after that is going to be a hole as well it does you no good to walk away with a piece of wood with a giant hole in it you're going to create a lot of smoke you're going to create a lot of soot you just call it good and now you'll know that any of these other squares are good, but once you get up to this point, it's too much. Again, it shouldn't have to be said, but when you start poking holes and stuff, you can you can call it good. Okay, here I got two images on the screen. I got the butterfly, and I got my name. Um, some of the next features use utilize that, and um, so if I've got these two images, um, the next thing, if, if you have two images, highlight them, they're both highlighted. Right now I can, if I have them highlighted, I can move them both together. But if I accidentally have one highlighted but not the other one and I move it, now I can't get it back to exactly the way it was if I'm two moves later. Remember, one move away I can hit undo and go back. You can go back that way and do it. But if I want to make sure that I don't accidentally move one from another once I have it where I want it, I can highlight both of them and hit group right here. That's our next button, group. When, once those items are grouped together, no matter which one I click on and move, they move together. It's like they're pasted together. One moves all of them. This comes in particularly handy if you have got uh, four or five different things on the screen and you're moving them together and it helps keep from misclicking on one and moving stuff around and getting stuff jumbled up. Once they're grouped, you can move them like that. If you need to move and change something, you can hit ungroup. Once you hit ungroup and unhighlight them, now they're, they're individuals again. And once I moved them around to where I want them, say I want them to stay together like that, Highlight both of them, hit group. Now you move one, you move them both. Okay. 
Okay, now we're moving on down the road, and we have got Smart Fill. I have no idea what Smart Fill does. I told you I know everything, so if somebody finds out what Smart Fill is, let me know. Uh, after Smart Fill, we're going to highlight these letters down here, and then we're going to work with the line. You hit, you hover over the line, down menu, first one up is left align. We hit left align, and all the left side of each of everything that I've highlighted is going to jump over there. That's left align. And we're going to do that back to where it was beginning. Now, this not only works with text, but it works with graphics too and it doesn't care so if I highlight everything on the page and I hit left align it lines the left side of the butterfly as well so you can do that with everything okay the we're just gonna move the butterfly side and I'll leave it alone for a while down here with the text again I hit align and do horizontal centering. Everything in the center is lined up. You see they're all different lengths, but the center is all lined up. Undo. Alright. You have the basic concept down. Some of these aren't hard. Right align, guess what's gonna happen? You're right, the right side aligns. Undo it. Make sure it's still highlighted. Top align means the top of everything is going to be aligned which is a jumbled mess in this situation but in some cases you need that highlight them all align the next one up is vertical centering um, I'm gonna throw the butterfly in here with just the text it looks like a jumbled mess but with the butterfly you can see okay so we're gonna do vertical centering Everything in the center lines up. And it doesn't matter. Um, the centers are lined up. Left, right is not taken into consideration unless you come up here and hit um, horizontal centering again. Now you got everything jumbled, you know, where the centers are both ways. Do it. Alright, the next one. A line, bottom of line. I'm not going to hit it. You know what's going to happen. All the bottoms of every thing that's a line is going to hit. It's going to be a jumbled mess. The next ones are the fun ones. The distribute horizontally and the distribute vertically. If we have got a bunch of text um, and um, here's our text and we We've just thrown on there and we need to get it to come together. Uh, we hit left align. And you can come back in here and you can click and you can drag this to where you think it's going to be to where they're all evenly spaced. Or you can just highlight them all. Click up here, hit distribute um, vertically. And what it's going to do is it's going to, I'm going to hit it, but what it's going to do is it's going to take the first line and the last line and figure out where that middle line needs to go. So distribute vertically. Now there's even spacing between all of them. Um, the same thing would go if you have um, three objects and you need to distribute them horizontally. It does the same thing. It figures out where the first one was, figures out where the last one was, and anything in between, whether it's one item, two items, three items, it will do equal spacing on all those items across the board. Um, so if you do a lot of plaques and stuff like that, that's real handy for that. Um, but that's what all that stuff does. All right. Um, all right, I think I'm going to call it for number two and we'll continue with number three. Um, I don't want to make these files so big that they're useless. Um, and who wants to listen to me drone on for more than 15 minutes at a time anyway, so... We're going to call this quits for this one, and we'll see you at the next one.